In the last video, we found the value for this integral using its relationship with the gamma function. In this video, I want to show you two other methods of doing it, one of which was commented by Suraj C. I want to express a very sincere gratitude for Suraj C, who illustrated a very straightforward yet elegant method of solving this using integration by part. So let's start with Suraj C's method. In the last video, we found that this integral was equal to e times integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared e to the negative x squared dx. If you do not see how I'm getting this, you can try to make u substitution using u equals to x cubed plus 1, or you can click on this i right here, and once you click on it, you can go to my video where I illustrate how this substitution leads to this integral. So, the main problem that we had was how to evaluate this integral right here, integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared times e to the negative x squared dx. And in the last video, we found that this, this entire integral was actually equal to 1 half factorial, which was equal to square root of pi over 2. So the answer to the entire question, answer to the entire question was e times square root of pi over 2. And Suraj C illustrated one method of evaluating this in a very quick and efficient way. And before I show you the method, you have to be acquainted with Gaussian integral, which is integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx, and its value is marvelously equal to square root of pi. If you do not know how to get this, you can use conversion to polar coordinates to analytically evaluate it, or you can click on another eye that should be popping up around this time to go to one of my integration B videos where I introduce you to Gaussian integral and show you how to evaluate it. So anyway, I'm going to assume in this video that you are acquainted with Gaussian integral and I will go on. Remember the integration by parts technique, integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. And for this integral, we are going to pick our u to the x. So let me write down this integral one more time. So negative infinity to infinity and let me write it like this. x times x times e to the negative x squared dx. And you may say, why am I separating this? Well, to begin with, realize that although we cannot integrate e to the negative x squared over elementary function, we can integrate x times e to the negative x squared by making simple substitution u equals to negative x squared. So we know we can integrate x times e to the negative x squared. So one, one thing you may think of is that we can let our dv be this thing. We can let our dv in integration by parts be x times e to the negative x squared dx because we are going to have to integrate dv, integrate dv to get this v and this v. So dv has to be something, some expression that we have, we must be able to integrate and x times e to the negative x squared does just that. So natural thing to do is to let u be x and dv be x times e to the negative x squared dx. So we have integral of u dv. So let me write that down. So we have u equals to x and dv being x times e to the negative x squared dx. That's telling us that du is equal to dx, differentiating this, and v is equal to negative 1 half e to the negative x squared, integrating this. If, you're, if you do not see how I'm getting this v, you can think of u substitution like this. So we are trying to integrate x times e to the negative x squared dx. You can make simple u substitution u equals to x squared, du is negative 2x dx, and you should get so let me just do it for the sake of it. We have e to the u because u is negative x squared and we want to have du which is negative 2x dx. So let's divide by negative 1 half to keep the entire expression the same and negative 2x dx turns to du and we know integral of e to the u is simply e to the u and our u is negative x squared. So that's how I'm getting negative 1 half e to the negative x squared. And now we can evaluate this integral. We have uv, so u times v is x times negative 1 half e to the negative x squared. So negative 1 half e to the negative x squared. And let's make sure we're integrating from negative infinity to infinity. And minus 
integral of v du and our v is negative 1f e to the negative x squared let me turn this negative sign to positive and write down 1f e to the negative x squared du which in this case is dx hey we have some expression that we know how to evaluate we know integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx is square root of pi and we have that right here let me make sure i write down the bounds too but we have it right here so we can factor out one half so one half times this gaussian integral and we know the value of this is square root of pi so we know this part, this entire part, is equal to square root of pi over 2. How about the part to the left? Well, we have one negative 1 half, x over e to the x squared, and we are evaluating it from negative infinity to infinity. And because exponential function is going to grow faster than a linear function, in fact, exponential function grows faster than any power function, the bottom of this fraction is going to grow faster than the top. So you can imagine us having 1 over 10, 1 over 100, 1 over 1000, the bottom getting faster, body, bottom increasing faster than the top. So this entire fraction is going to approach 0 either way, the negative infinity and infinity. So we basically have 0 plus square root of pi over 2, which is square root of pi over 2. So we have our answer. We have e times square root of pi over 2 because this integral evaluates to square root of pi over 2. So that's another way of evaluating this integral. And now I'm going to show you the third way of evaluating this in integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared e to the negative x squared dx. So let me go down and write down that integral. So we wish to evaluate integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared e to the negative x squared dx. And the method I'm going to show you guys is called the Feynman's, Feynman's trick. Feynman's trick, if I can spell it correctly. Feynman's trick for evaluating integral. And it's also called differentiating under the integral integral sign. Differentiating, differentiating, differentiating under the integral sign, under the integral. And this method can be used to evaluate a seemingly very difficult integral, and it is indeed a difficult integral, like integral from negative infinity to infinity of sine of x over x dx. I may make a video on this in the future because it, is, it uses an ingenious use of e to the negative x t to evaluate this integral. But that's for another video. In today's video, I want to focus on this integral at hand. And admittedly, the Feynman's trick using this integral is much slower than the method using integration by parts that we just, we just tried out. But in fact, it's a very good introduction to Feynman's trick by using it on this integral. And I think it's an excellent problem solving tool to know. So although it's slower to get acquainted with this amazing trick, I'm going to use, I'm going to use it to evaluate this integral. And what we do is by examining the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the e to the negative x squared t dx. And this thing is a function of t. And there's two things to take from this function of t. One, we can get some more simplified version of this integral. In fact, we can prove that this integral is equal to square root of pi over t. And we are going to do so soon enough. And another thing you may notice is by taking derivative of this integral f prime of t, we are going to get integral from negative infinity to infinity. And when you differentiate this, that's why this trick is called differentiating under the integral sign. When we differentiate this with respect to t, so now x squared is constant, not t. In, in our case, we are only considering t to be the variable. So we are going to get negative x squared e to the negative x squared t dx when we differentiate this with respect to t. Because we have e to the this thing, and we got to use chain rule, we got to multiply by derivative of this with respect to t, which is simply going to be negative x squared because that's constant. 
and realize that this integral looks very close. This integral looks very close to the integral given to us, integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared e to the negative x squared. In fact, when t is equal to 1, so when we have f prime of t equals to 1, we have the integral that we wish to find. We have the integral given to us, or something very close to it, x squared dx, or we have negative times i, because we have this negative sign, we have to take that into account. And this fact, along with this fact, so this thing and this thing, together can show us that this integral has to equal square root of pi over 2. How? Well, we know f of t, we are going to prove this soon, but let's assume that f of t is equal to square root of pi over t. And we know f prime at t equals to 1 is the value of our integral times negative 1. And what is f prime of t? Well, f f of t is square root of pi over square root of t or t to the negative one half, which is equal to square root of pi times negative one half t to the negative three halves when you differentiate it. So we know f prime at t of one, f prime at t equals to one, is equal to square root of pi over two, and we do a negative sign, and one two negative three halves is simply going to be one. And that's telling us that negative i, negative the value of our integral, is equal to negative square root of pi over two, or the value of our integral is square root of pi over two. So the only thing we have to do is to show that this integral is equal to square root of pi over t, and we will do so right away. So we want to show the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared t dx is equal to square root of pi over t, and realize that this resembles the Gaussian integral. So we are going to use the same technique, and I'm going to go through it very quickly here. If you want to see a more in-depth approach and why dx dy is equal to r dr d data and such, I recommend you check out my video on Gaussian integral, and once again, you can click on this side to go to my video. And I'm going to go through it really quickly in this video because I already have another video examining this in depth. So let's say i is equal to this thing, then we also know that i can equal to integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative y squared t dy, and multiplying these two get us i squared, and we have this integral, this double integral of e to the, when you multiply these things together, we have negative t and x squared plus y squared dx dy, and we convert to polar, our data goes from 0 to 2 pi, our r go from 0 to infinity, e to the negative t x squared plus y squared is r squared, and we have r dr d data. Once again, if you do not understand this, I highly recommend you go and check out my video to understand what's going on. And we can now break this apart. Integral from data equals to 0 to 2 pi of d data, and integral from r equals to 0 to infinity of e to the negative t r squared r dr, and both of these we can find value of. The first one is 2 pi right away, and the second one we can make the u substitution, u equals to negative t r squared, then du is negative 2 t r dr, so we have to have negative 2 t right here, so let's divide by negative 2 t. So we have negative 1 over 2t times integral from r equals to, let's, let's change it. We have, we used to have integral of, now we have integral of negative 2t e to the negative t r squared r dr. And we know we have integral of e to the u, e to the u du, this, this entire thing is u, du. So we have e, integral of e to the u or e to the negative t r squared. So we have, so let's just write it like this. So we have e to the negative tr squared from 0 to infinity. And this part, we have negative pi over t, 2 and 2 down below cancel out, 2 and 1 half. And we have, we have this part, e to the negative tr squared. And that's same thing as 1 over e to the tr squared, and we're going from 0 to infinity. When r is approaching infinity, when r approaches infinity, we're going to be dividing by something that's approaching infinity, so that's going to be 0. So we have 0 minus, when r is equal to 0, we have e to the power of 0, which is 1. So we have 0 minus 1, 
So this thing evaluates to pi over t. So we know i squared, we know i squared is equal to pi over t. That's telling us that value of i is square root of pi over t. And we're done. We have shown, so let's summarize what we have done. We use the Feynman's trick, differentiating under the integral, to notice that the, our integral was intimately related to this f of t, integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared t dx. And by differentiating it and evaluating the integral at t equals to 1, we realized that this integral was equal to negative i. And using another way of finding this integral, square root of pi over t, we connected all of these together to show that i was equal to square root of pi over 2. So the value of this integral is e times square root of pi over 2.